everyone, I'm Kim, the mom boss behind MAEK, and today I have a short tutorial inspired by my favorite childhood Halloween movie ever. This was hands down my jam, you better believe, every time Halloween season rolled around. So like for me as a kid, it was like September, October, November. Um, whenever this movie played on Disney Channel, you could find me in front of the TV sitting just inches away. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put a picture up on the screen now for you to see. So if you hadn't guessed already, this Tumblr was inspired by Halloween Town, the OG, the very first um, movie. So if you didn't recognize it already, this Tumblr was based so this Tumblr, as you saw, was inspired by the Halloween Town movie. Um, Kimberly J. Brown was like my favorite actress as a child. My name is also Kimberly, so like, you know, I was like, we're basically we're basically the same person. Um, but Halloween Town was my ultimate favorite movie. Every time it played on Disney Channel, I was like, Mom, Mom, we gotta we gotta watch this tonight. We gotta watch this tonight. Um, so I wanted to do a Tumblr that was inspired by Halloween Town. So I started looking up um, some pictures and the original like cover for the movie um, was this really beautiful sky and it was pink and it was purple but it was blue so I'm like okay let's go with that look. Um, I did create the template around the bottom of the tumbler and I was careful not to get the pink slightly separated. Um, I did put the pink jacket on because I saw the taxi obviously if any of you have seen um, in a house that's the Cromwell spouse um, but I did create the template and I am super proud of myself for that because I didn't even know how to do it. <laughs> but I promise that this tumbler is so easy to create. If I can do it, so can you. I will list and link everything I use in the description box below. I'll also have a discount code for you down there at checkout if you want to save on some things. I think that's that. Let's get to it. As always, the first thing we're going to do is prep our cup. I'm using a 22 ounce plump from Stainless Depot, so I've sanded it and washed it. And now we're going to go ahead and paint it with three colors from Color Shot. So I'm using Farmer's Daughter, Aromatherapy, and Center Stage. And I looked up pictures of the original Halloween Town movie color, and it was a lot of pinks and purples swirled together with a little bit of blue in there. So I'm just kind of going in with my paint and just kind of swirling it on there, splatting it on there. I don't really have a method for this. I'm just kind of alternating between that pink and the purple. Just make sure you don't go too heavy with your coverage. You don't want to get any runs. I don't typically have issues with runs with Color Shot as long as I make sure to shake them for a solid minute before using them. So after I get a look with that pink and purple that I like, I'm going to go in with center stage. This is kind of a a royal purple I guess I would call it. In certain lights it looks kind of like a deep royal blue. In other lights it looks like a deep purple. It's a really beautiful color. So just keep going in with your paints until you kind of get a look that you like. It doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to be going over it with glitter. This is just kind of a base and a layout for where we want our colors to go. So once you get your paint how you like it, go ahead and let it dry. Those color shot paints dry in like 15 minutes. It is the greatest thing. Once your paint is dry, you're gonna go ahead and put it on your turner, mix up your epoxy, and apply a thin layer. Now we're gonna go in with our glitter. I'm gonna be using Patty Cakes, Birthday Blend, Wild Berry, and Crushed Diamonds. Those are all from the Glitter Guy. So I'm going to apply my glitter using this little like spatula tool from Cricut. It just came with my maker. Um, alternatively, you could use like a spoon or a butter knife or one of those kind of big popsicle sticks, whatever you have um, laying around you can use. So I'm going to scoop up a little bit of that glitter that was patty cakes and I'm going to hold the spatula about 10 to 12 inches above my cup because I just want that to sprinkle on there. I don't want like lumps of the color. I just kind of want them all to seamlessly blend together. So I'm going to gently just tap the side of that spatula with my finger and that's going to have a little bit of glitter sprinkle down at a time so they just like I said blend really nicely together. As far as where I'm placing my glitter I'm kind of going by the colors but not really I'm just kind of swirling them on there. 
I don't want to put too much thought into this because I tend to overthink everything that I do and so I'm just kind of letting my mind go for it. I do know that I want to go heavy at the top of my cup with the crushed diamonds. In my head I'm seeing that kind of as like the stars up at the top of the sky and then I'm going to fade it down a little bit kind of into the cup in random little spots. So you can see here I'm moving that spatula super high up. It's actually higher than my camera so Sometimes it's right in the camera, sorry. <laughs> so when I do that, it's probably like two feet, I bet, above my cup. And that really just gives a super gentle sprinkle down. So I've got my colors laid out. And now I'm just going to go back in with different colors and just sprinkle on a little bit here and there. I'm going to continue this process until my cup is completely covered with glitter. I'm going to give it um, two good coats of the Rust-Oleum clear gloss sealer that I always use. I'm going to make sure that's dry and then I'm going to go in with one coat or two coats of epoxy. For me, I needed one coat to get my cup smooth. You might need two. That's totally fine too. So just epoxy until your cup is smooth. We don't want to move on to the peekaboo part until it is smooth because if you have a bunch of bumps, you will see that underneath your paint. Now that we've epoxied our cup till smooth, it's nice and cured, we're going to move on to our decals. So this little silhouette I made in Cricut Design Space and I will have it linked below. There's a Google Doc, you can find it for free. Um, so I'm just showing you guys here, I have reverse weeded my template. So normally what I would leave in, I weed it out. Hopefully that makes sense, but you guys can kind of see it. Um, and so then I was showing you guys on the ends. I did measure my cup before I put epoxy on, so my template's a little short, but I will show you how to fix that, no big deal. So you do wanna use a piece of transfer tape when applying this template to your cup because there are lots of little pieces. Um, if you've done like a Northern Lights tumbler before, typically you wouldn't use transfer tape to apply your tree line, but this you definitely want to because they're small pieces. So I just kind of trimmed off that end and I'm gonna trim off the extra transfer tape on the bottom. That's just gonna make it easier as I wrap it around my cup. And you can see on my template, I also did kind of trim right by those trees because I didn't want my trees um, to have like that solid piece overlapping the branches, if that makes sense. So I'm going to wrap it onto my cup. I'm going to make sure everything looks good and it fits. I could have recut this, but I was lazy and didn't want to. Um, so it's totally fine. But I'm going to hold down one end with just a little extra piece of transfer tape there once you have it on there nice and straight and we're going to wrap this similar to how we would do um, like a vinyl wrap on our cup or tacky tape so I put that piece literally right in the way so move that over <laughs> out of the way because you don't want to wrap your vinyl on top of that transfer tape so I'm just going to pull back about an inch or two trim that off and lay that onto my cup now it's important to remember with this template if you get little wrinkles or bubbles under your vinyl it is fine um, this is just marking off you know our, our paint so don't worry if you get little bubbles or wrinkles under your vinyl, it's totally fine, I promise. So now I'm gonna take my little vinyl squeegee and I'm going to slowly go around and apply this onto my cup. 
So I cut my vinyl on just a scrap piece of printed vinyl I had. You could use 651 or 631. It really doesn't matter. I don't recommend stencil vinyl. I find that the spray paint kind of leaks underneath that. Um, but just, again, use what you have around. There's no need to, to order anything extra. So if you have a little bit of overlap like I do here, you can just trim that with scissors. And then we're going to carefully peel back our transfer tape. Just make sure all those small pieces are really pushed onto your cup well, because you don't want to tear those up as you're going or tear your, your decal. So carefully remove your transfer tape. And then once this is removed, we're going to go ahead and grab some, um, tape. I think this is painter's tape that I'm going to use. I'm not really sure. I stole it from my husband's garage. Um, but any kind of like painter's tape, electrical tape that you have will do just fine. So the one that I'm going to use is almost two inches. This is just the biggest one I could find. Um, but like I said, you can just use whatever you have. Basically, we're just covering the top of our cup so we don't cover it in paint when we paint our template. So just go all the way up and make sure you get at the top as well. Now I'm gonna show you guys where I had cut my decal a little bit too short um, and I kinda had to do a little wonky thing on the end. I'm just using an X-Acto knife to trim those blunt edges. I'm just kinda gonna make it look almost like a little hill just because I don't wanna have, um, there's my head, sorry. <laughs> I don't wanna have like weird awkward edges on my template I want it to flow naturally I want it to look almost like it's seamless so just use your exacto knife to trim make a little mountain or a hill um, right there now we're gonna go ahead and paint so I'm gonna use black tie affair from color shot again I've shaken this really well so I can get good one coat coverage if your spray paint doesn't cover this well and you're gonna need two coats just do two thin coats don't try to go in heavy cuz you'll get runs and that's no good Make sure that you also get the bottom of your tumbler as well. Just double check that you're getting all those little tiny stars and bats and all the small details. So once our paint is dry, we're gonna go ahead and remove our decal. So when I do this, I like to lay my tumbler on just an old kitchen towel or an old t-shirt, something soft so that I'm not getting little scratches in my paint. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the biggest part of the decal first, and then we'll work on those little tiny pieces. And I have sped this up because this probably is the longest step in the process of making this tumbler, but it is so worth it. Don't rush it, take your time. My biggest tip with removing that vinyl for a peekaboo is when I push my tool um, kind of into the vinyl so I can pull it up and remove it. I push it towards the vinyl. I hope that makes sense. I feel like I'm not articulating that very well. Um, but I will go so that my tool is pushing into the vinyl, not at the end of the vinyl pushing into the paint because if your tool slips, you could scratch your paint. Um, so just take your time. Make sure you get all those little pieces. I always double check uh, in the moment after I've removed my peekaboo pieces and then I always check one more time before I epoxy because there's nothing worse than doing a peekaboo cup and as you're putting on the layer of epoxy realizing that you missed a piece or two and now it is permanently stuck there. <laughs> so just go ahead we're going to remove all these little pieces and then we're going to move on to our sky decal. This little pumpkin has so many teeny lines but I promise it's so worth it. Once we've removed all our peekaboo pieces, we're gonna go ahead and add our quote to the sky. So I chose being normal is vastly overrated. I did type this up in design space. This is going to be in the Google Drive with the, um, the Skyline template as well, if you would like to use this. So I did a 0 0.05 offset and I cut that using a glow in the dark blue vinyl. This stuff, the glow is insane on it. Uh, it's kind of a pain to cut. So if you use this vinyl, I definitely recommend doing some test cuts on it. I think I had to use um, like my cardstock setting. Um, it was kind of a pain, but anyway, I got it. It was worth it. <laughs> so I'm going to place my decal in the sky 
right kind of above the pumpkin and the taxi. So to me, this is the focal point, the front of my tumbler, and I want people to see that little pumpkin there. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna put it on, as always, I'm gonna leave a little piece of transfer tape on the edge to hold it down. I'm going to place it, I'm going to measure it so that I only have to cut my decal once because as I've said before, there is nothing worse than getting your decal on your cup, realizing it's crooked and admitting defeat and having to peel it off and do it again. That is, that is the worst part <laughs> of decal day. So go ahead and measure your decal, make sure that it's straight. I'm using the S in is and then the top of the Y in vastly. I don't want to use the font from normal or overrated because that's um, like a loopy font. So it's not straight and if I measure from that my decal will be crooked. So I'm going to carefully remove my backing. I'm going to lay my decal on there. I always push down the middle and then push out the sides. And then once I get this on there I will carefully remove my transfer tape and then I'm going to go ahead and add my um, top layer onto my decal. And as always, you guys will see how I layer my decal in an odd way, but this helps me to get it on straight every single time. Um, because if you are to mess up the top layer over your offset, you have to peel them both off and redo them both, which is just a pain. So I like to layer um, word by word. So we'll take our time, we'll get that on there straight. And then once we get our words on there, we're gonna put our little witch flying through the sky. I decided to place her kind of to the right of my decal, but you could place her really anywhere that you wanted to, anywhere that it looks good to you. There's really no right or wrong um, when it comes to you know placing those extra little decals in your tumbler. Just where you want space filled or where you want it to kind of be the focus on your tumbler, that's where you can go ahead and put it. Once I get my decals onto my cup, I'm going to go ahead and add two more coats of epoxy. So the first coat of epoxy I put over my decals. I am so sorry I forgot to record it, but I added in just a sprinkle of blueberry ice mica from the glitter guy into my epoxy to give it a little bit of a blue shimmer. So like I said before, I kind of went off the colors that are on the original Halloween Town like cover photo and that had pinks, purples, and some blue kind of swirled in there so I wanted to play off the blue a little bit again which is why I chose the blue um, offset for my decal. So when you're adding mica into your epoxy, I've shown it in a few other videos, you literally just need like the tiniest sprinkle. It adds a beautiful sparkle to your epoxy, but it still allows you to see everything underneath. Just remember that less is more. So I did that for the first coat of epoxy over my decals. And then I did one more coat of regular epoxy over my decals and my cup was finished. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I would so appreciate a thumbs up on my video. If you want to see more tutorials in the future, go ahead and subscribe. I do upload a new tutorial every single week. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy crafting.